with the 21B Global Human Resource Advisory Webinar. This broadcast will be starting in the next few minutes. So hello everyone and a very warm welcome to the second series of advisory sessions of 2021. These sessions focus on delivering and updating you on the new features and functionalities in each of the Oracle quarterly releases. My name is Chris Gomez and I'm an account director here at Evasys. And I know that we have many new first time attendees joining us today. It's great to have you join us and welcome. We hope you find these sessions as useful as many of our regular attendees who have joined us today too. For those of you that have joined us again, welcome back. Today, I'm your host for this session, and I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague, Mohammed Atta Hussein, who works in our HCM Center of Excellence team, and will be taking us through the HCM updates in 21B. Atta has five years of experience in working with Oracle Solutions, predominantly in HCM, across eBusiness Suite and now Oracle Cloud applications. So Atta will, will be taking us through the hot topics and everything you need to know about the main features of this release. The session today is planned for 60 minutes and we'll ensure that we leave enough time for questions, as always, at the end of the session. And as before, we will make an extended PowerPoint available to you at the end of this session, along with a recording of this session, so that you can look at that at your own leisure to and, and to have a look at the features that, that are available. So by means of an agenda, we would like to cover four main areas. So firstly, I will take you through the feature summary template that we use before then moving on to allowing Atta to, to take us through the analysis of the latest release providing an insight into the new available features, as well as highlighting things to consider when deploying them. This will also cover known issues that need to be considered. And Atta will, will talk, talk us through these in around 30 to 40 minutes today. And then after this session, we'll recap on the three main technologies that we spoke about in the 21A sessions, for those of you that were with us at, in the 21A session, before we then focus on today's topic, which will cover analytics. 
And Atta will talk us through how the value-based analytics that we've developed help our customers with challenges that they that, and that you may face on a regular basis in the HCM world. We will then look to close the webinar with a Q&A session at the end. So please do ask any questions throughout the webinar in the chat option that you have, and then we'll look to, to cover off as many of these questions as we can during that Q&A session at the very end. Okay, so moving on to our approach to the Oracle update. Now, many of you may already be um, familiar with this slide. Um, so I'm conscious that you know it, it's worthwhile me, me taking you through the slide again. Um, so please just use this as a reminder whilst I take the, the new attendees that are joining us for the first time today through it to, to familiarize them with, uh, with how we, we present this information. So each slide that we're gonna to present to you today includes the name of the feature with a short description. And this allows us to better inform you and give you a brief of what the actual feature is for. We also include a business benefit section to help you understand how advantageous it may be to your organization with the outcomes that it could give you. We then include a high level impact analysis on the right with four main areas. So firstly, you have the impact level. And that's that's ranges between low and high. And the low would mean no large scale impact. So regression testing is not really required or, or can even be ignored. And, and obviously a high impact would be the complete opposite. Does the feature need to be enabled or will it just appear post upgrade? How about configuration? Well, we highlight this too as part of our feature summary. Clearly, Updates that need configuration need more time um, to, to be considered and planned in. And lastly, we include a quick win gauge, which takes into account the level of effort and time required to get this feature set up. So Atta, over to you. What can we expect from the 21B HCM release? Thanks, Chris, for your kind handover. So we'll be proceeding the slideshow with various uh, breakup heads. So starting with, we can uh, start with the new features in R21B release. So on a high note, we have 36 new features for global HR alone. And some of the features may uh, distribute among other products as well. So it would be applicable to integrating modules such as parent, uh, payroll, talent, and others. So let me start. So let me start with HCM common features. So first feature we have first and foremost feature. They are new enhancements to our transaction console. So we had this process which had to be scheduled every time so that would be refresh transaction administrator console transaction status so this process was supposed to be scheduled every hour as recommended by my oracle support to have seamless uh, uh, you know experience for the administrators and our users but in this release we have it out of the box and it is scheduled for an hourly basis so we have a very good business benefit here it would provide a good add-on to the administrators and make seamless connectivity for the users for their security issues so let me go to the next one we have areas of responsibility based approval routing policies so as we are aware so businesses rely on various levels of approvals so many businesses and other domains such as public sectors and government uh, units and all the industries depending upon the domain in business they may have more than one representative and n number of uh, representatives who would handle specific areas in the organization in this release we have a leverage to 
increase the number of areas of responsibility approval routing policies so we have a profile options available to us with use of this profile option we can set the number of aors between 500 to a maximum of 3000 so a best policy oracle best practices reveal the areas of responsibilities for having 500 EORs would be an optimum measure. So we have a very good business benefit here. The approval process would now be seamless with EORs for uh, more than 500 users with parallel approvals in stage. Then we have Transaction Design Studio for HCM Experience Design Studio enhancements. So we have out of the box available reports. We have something known as configuration reports in this release that would help us be aware of whatever is happening in our rules. So it would give us the details, a bright and a broad picture of what is happening in our rules. It may be our rules or any predefined rules. So it would give us a leverage to see whatever uh, information the administrator needs and to maintain his business so this configuration report is an add-on business benefit for technical experts uh, to have optimized uh, plans and processes in place and leverage future plans and processes wherever required and the next one HCM Experience Design Studio Access Enhancements. So we have a new feature. So the HCM Experience Design Studio is now moved under my client group's work area. So we have a new work area known as transaction configuration and audit. So we have out of the box HCM Experience Design Studio here. And just by clicking on it, HCM Experience Design Studio, an automatic sandbox is created. So the admin or the HR person no more needs to go create a sandbox and then enter our HCM Experience Design Studio. And this well makes our life very easy for all our customizations and day-to-day -day needs. And coming to autocomplete rules, so we have autocomplete rules for HCM Experience Design Studio. So in this release, we have out of the box delivered rules. So we may have two categories, ready to use rules that would be statutory rules. And we have other no known rules known as template rules. This would be tailored according to our business needs. So it enhances the business experience in our autocomplete rules. Moving to the next. secure access for workers with multiple assignments so in our current release we see that our um, security is person based security so when we have access to a person we may have access to all his assignments and personal information so in our release actually this would be a multi phase implementation release in upcoming releases now we have only otbi subject areas available in 21b so in upcoming releases, we'll have the leverage to access only particular assignments of a person. So, but there is a catch here. So uh, according to Oracle, we cannot still use Oracle search person indexes in release 21B. And the custom criteria would never be modified by any Oracle practices. And we need to manage our own custom criteria. So we have a tremendous business benefit here. This would impact our audit capacities and our security and enhance our security processes, our data access sets across our business units, our legal entities. And this is very useful for persons having more than one assignment or multi-level assignments in an enterprise. So it has an immense business benefit here. So let me move on to the next one. And there are some performance improvements in our HCM BIB based notifications. So 
as we know a new column known as new xml type column was introduced in our previous release 20c and from now the data cache column has become obsolete from this release and only new xml type column would be utilized so this basically improves the performance time for hcm bip approval notifications and gives a seamless uh, approval flows so we don't have much here but we are expecting in future releases it would make our work more easier so let me move to new features quick wins default with no configuration so first one we have display approval details after approval completion so the employee contingent worker or hr admin with access to change personal information can view all our current and proposed changes after the approval transaction is up completed so we have catch here and all those approvals set until now in our uh, enterprise so these approvals will not have this functionality and only the new approvals which are configured after this release will have this leverage so we have a good business impact here it improves the user experience and makes a user's day-to-day -day life very easy and we have the next one new job set for person name format changes so whenever there were person name format changes earlier we have to run multiple processes or maybe jobs and now we have the leverage of a job set apply name formats to person names keywords and ldap this single job set combines all our needed jobs which we used to run for person name format changes and it has the multiple jobs such as apply name formats to persons send personal data for multiple users to ldap or update search keyword person so this job format job set runs even if either one of the job fails so it is a bit independent based on our need this keenly would increase our productivity and it would make the seamless performance for a user and make users life very easy and during local and global transfer so there were many recommendations from businesses and like when will oracle leverage the capacity of co copying the business title so uh, fortunately in this release oracle has brought this to us and in this release in the responsive ui local and global transfer when we are doing along with co copying a primary assignment data we can copy the business titles too so we can enable this so our business title destination legal employer it would be appended with a number so that we can differentiate the business titles so this adds an advantage to the hr admins who are uh, working hard doing global transfers and it uh, tremendously reduces our manual work on this and we have a uh, good security features which would be required by most of the businesses and legal entities especially when they want to view the work relationship page we have out of the box read only access for work relationship page from a responsive ui so we have a responsive ui based work relationship page which can be viewed only in a read only mode so this makes the life easy for a uh, for hr administrators and managers to check out the work relationship info of an employee during terminations hire during global temporary transfers global transfers and transfers so let me move to the next one so from now on the edit work relationship quick action would be renamed to work relationship so 
we don't have any specific business business advantage here, but uh, they are minor UI changes, which would be uh, rather helpful in our future um, releases and business point of views. Okay, so coming back to pending worker pages. So we have a leverage here. We can hide the person number field in the convert while converting a pending worker to an employee. And this is a, a very good future feature so that um, we can um, have the person number ready whenever we, we are converting our pending workers into employees. So it literally simplifies the user experience for uh, HR administrators or HR specialist while performing the conversion. And we have a wonderful feature uh, to preview documents of records while attaching without having to download them. So this, I could say, it would be a boon to every user. May it be an HR admin, may it be a manager, may it be an employee. So it reduces the necessity to download documents again and again. And the person or a manager, suppose, is uh, filling a document of record, approving it for an employee. He could have a broader picture and uh, it would make his life easy on this. And flexibility for initiator to edit the document of record submitted for approval. Um, suppose I am a user, I have submitted a document of record to my manager and in worst case scenario, I had forgot to make some changes in the document or I had to append data in the last moment after I have submitted to the approval. So I have the leverage here to edit the document which has already set for approval. So it is a very great feature and it makes our life easy. So. I believe so. This is one of our key features, uh, which is user friendly. Moving to the next one, we have enable completion of document of record transactions when the initiator is terminated. So in previous releases, we had an issue the transactions used to fail when the initiator was terminated. So this has been overcome by Oracle in this release. So now the transactions would not get uh, fail. Nevertheless, it would complete even though the initiator has been terminated. So this gives us a benefit in our day-to-day -day businesses and especially the administrators who monitor the transactions and it give us an leverage so that even though the initiator has left the company, we can still proceed with the transaction and complete it successfully without any issues. Okay, moving to the next one. We have quick wins default with yes configuration. So flex fee, the first one, let me take you to this one. Flex field parameters supported for assignment extension, extensive flex field. So we have a boon in this release that we could use our descriptive flex fields in our EFFs, in assignments. So this gives us a good leverage in our customizations and cater our business needs. So let me move to the next one. Source assignment attributes added to add assignment approval payload. So in any businesses, the approval rules play a key role even during our payroll, even during our HR, 
when uh, we can see whenever we hire an employee, pay the employee, transfer the employee, or do any actions in our human capital management, approval roles are the backbone of every business need. So Oracle in this release has come up with um, more capacitated attributes in our payload. So it allows us to configure rules more uh, dynamically uh, based on our, our requirement and we can tailor the needs close to our requirement. So it is a very good business boon to all of us. So it would uh, give us the leverage in reality to achieve close approval flows, whatever we require. And in day-to-day -day dynamic businesses processes and business rules, this is a very high hanging feature which Oracle has provided in this release. So I can say this is one of the um, high fruits Oracle has given us in this release, especially in the area of approval management. Compensation zone attributes added to employment notification data model. So we can, we can include this in the employment notifications by customizing RTF templates. So we have many attributes such as add contingent worker, hire an employee, transfer, add an assignment, change assignment, or add a non-worker, add a pending worker. So we can include all this compensation zone attributes in our business flows and even in the salary section. So the business benefit here is uh, quite good because it gives us the overview of the compensation zone types for different businesses and maybe if they are zone sections as well. Let me move to the next one. Personalized employment quick actions. So let me zoom in my screen. So under my team work area, we have quick actions and we can make these quick actions independent from our assignment info. So there would be no impact if I do any changes in the responsive employment pages. So this is a very good feature. Actually, uh, partitioning the data and independently hiding employment quick actions. So it gives us the benefit to do customizations and even keep the work moving in an orderly fashion. Moving to the next. Retain indicators for synchronize from position and calculating FTE headcount. So let me uh, tell you in a better way. So we have the ability to retain synchronize from position, calculate FTE, and headcounts automatically in this employment conversion processes. So uh, suppose uh, we are converting a pending worker to an employee or a contingent worker, or even in Oracle recruiting, so we can make use of this feature. So the users have the leverage, whether they want to select the position synchronization, during a particular process. So this may depend upon our day-to-day -day business needs or business domain, and it can be tailored according to our business requirements easily. Okay, moving to the next. New document records approval payload to, re to retrieve requester information. So we have a new feature 
um suppose uh, i uh, there is a, a worker who submits an approval and in meanwhile he resigns so the transaction even when the worker is inactive will get completed uh, based on our users uh, requesters attributes so requesters assignment even if it is in the inactive status the approval rules would remain so i guess this would be a very similar feature as i have spoken in the earlier session so I, the key business benefit here would add us to the approval management flow seamless seamlessly catered to our business needs okay so let me move to the next section quick wins and opt-ins so in any enterprise the audit plays a vital role so the one of the major goals of the enterprise would be to protect the sensitive data and manage the audit policy seamlessly so we have in this release a read only access for the sensitive attributes such as person's account number citizenship number passport nid home address and so on so we get this out of the box in this release so this is very useful in our compliance and monitoring uh, business uh, requirements wherever is required so this is a very good feature that adds on to our audit policies of the organizations the next one let me go to the next okay last updated by and last updated date fields added to employment info so one of the major uh, us in the oracle community was whenever a person such as an hr specialist manager or an administrator does any changes to the account of an user employment record or maybe the i mean the assignment record so we it, it is a very it is very difficult to maintain the track and the leg and the sanctity of the data so in this release we have a clear visibility we have a section in our employment history that would show us the last updated by and the last updated fields so this makes an hr administrators or an hr specialist life very easy so and we have a crystal clear uh, track down in the system like what was the last fields updated in the assignment and who updated those so this would increase our visibility and cater our needs and to maintain the sanctity of the data this uh, this feature is a is a must i feel many enterprises would opt for it and it would uh, surely give a uh, good add on to our uh, investment in this release we have an opportunity to edit the document of records header so suppose there is a person and suppose uh, we have employees in the higher level of management and we want to see their job and employee employee code so in the document of records uh, header we can include the information according to our need so this also is a very good feature which uh, allows us to uh, you know opt in and make our uh, businesses uh, run smoothly so and this let me show you once so there are actually plugins available for various employment flows also for this so 
Uh, let me move to the next one. And we have a new feature that is, uh, we can control the defaulting of a business title based on either job or position. So we can have this in the responsive UI environment and make any one of these three configuration options. Maybe we can configure it maybe based on a position or a job or maybe defaulting based on a job and retaining the overridden value. So it is up to us whichever uh, configuration we select. So that would uh, retain the business title. So let me show you this one as well. So in our case, in this case, so the business title has been defaulted from a position and from this release onwards, we can make it even for a job. So let me tell you the business impact for this. So it gives us more flexibility, whether to use either a job or a position in the responsive UI to cater our business title. So this also is a very good, uh, feature that uh, gives the organizations the benefit to change the business titles depending upon their business needs. Maybe if they have selected job-based hierarchy or a position base, so they have the capacity to change the business title based upon either jobs or positions being used in the organization. And the one of the uh, high hanging features, according to me, would be this one as well. So the users have the ability to show the default dates in various employment flows. So various flows such as uh, while hiring, while adding an assignment or uh, creating a local and global transfer or maybe a transfer while terminating the employee. So we can have the default effective dates in the, all the employment flows. So this is a good feature which gives us flexibility to, to change from the default behavior. So, and there are many more uh, employment flows also, which um, Oracle would be releasing in the next upcoming releases where the default date can be changed. And uh, we have a small, but not the least feature, uh, position management ability to save for later. So this basically is nothing but for enabling our save and close buttons in our uh, em employment flows. So this, of course, will uh, improve the user's experience during various employment flows and makes them crystal clear. Okay. So as I spoke to you about the header for document of record, so we have a similar uh, configuration for uh, areas of responsibility page as well. So we can uh, customize the areas of our responsibility page uh, using this. So maybe if I want to have the person's name and his NID or, a, uh, or other data. So this could be done by using our page composers in the responsive UI. So business benefit here would be seamless user experience. So I can just uh, let you know it would add more charm to the look and feel of the application. So the, this may not be such fruitful, but surely it adds to the feel of the application. As I told you earlier, we have the leverage in this release. We could increase the number of uh, AORs used for
for uh, more than 500 representatives so for this as i told you earlier so we can um, have a profile option enabled and we would set the limit of how many EORs we would be using so again i would like to repeat this is for sure a core feature in our approval management and it has impact uh, and it has huge impact in our uh, business benefits so as i told you like approval rules are a must for any organization and this feature especially makes a life easy and especially for uh, multiple domain organizations uh, such as private uh, public sectors or private sectors or educational institutes or hospitals so all types of business would be fruitful with this new feature in 21b so this would be one of the highlights in our new releases okay so we have some time let me go to the rest features businesses would like to see which is the primary assignment of an user or in some businesses may do not have the requirement to see the primary assignment in case of single assignment but usually where multiple assignments are used in enterprises they surely would like to see which is the primary assignment so in this feature we can enable this field known as primary assignment yes or no which would indicate whether it is a primary assignment or a secondary assignment for a user. So to use this feature, so we can use the responsive UI change assignment user interface and get this configured. And coming to the next one. document records plugin section for responsive employment flows so we can add uh, specific document records to employment pro employment flows by using this plugin so we have uh, various flows such as uh, as i mentioned earlier there are numerous flows and we may see more flows in future in the upcoming releases for now we have some of the common flows such as hiring an employee hiring a contingent worker transferring an employee terminating him or making global and local transfer so basically in this case it makes the life of an hr administrator or an hr specialist easy so that we have uh, usage of document of records in each and every businesses and they style they stand one of the core uh, necessities in any business uh, in satisfying the legislative requirement and statutory requirements okay so coming to one more feature so integration key map support for loading organization tree using hcm data loader so uh, we we can now use uh, okay let me put it in this way so when the user doesn't know the user keys uh, which uniquely identify the record so we can make use of this integration key so uh, integration keys as you know would be unique across all the objects and would be stored on our integration key map table so this is a bit useful in our hdl loads so we have a similar feature on hdl again so let me go to that okay so let me go to the next one first okay so we have autocomplete rules for person phone business So in this release, we have out of the box rules for validation. So we have out of the box rule for validating such as the phone number formats 
or the area code or validate area based on phone type so this is very useful in businesses that are spread across uh, uh, geographically in other continents and in each country and each continent there may be different requirements for area and phone format and this indeed is a good feature that uh, out of the box gives us the validation uh, uh, you know uh, validation function so that um, we can make our businesses uh, business flows very smooth so let me go to the next one Okay, so the next one again is autocomplete roles for employment business objects. So uh, this is nothing but um, we can say in our business flows, uh, we have various uh, sections like when and why or in work assignment or work term contracts. We can use this autocomplete role. So it this is actually um, add on Oracle is giving by studying various businesses and maybe different businesses require different requirements so uh, keeping in mind some of the specific business domains oracle has provided as this autocomplete rules so this feature out of the box uh, gives us leverage so we need not rely on oracle development to implement it every time and we have one more autocomplete role for workforce structures also so again i could like to add uh, all these uh, autocomplete rules as per a uh, business benefit it saves time so it gives us uh, uh, leverage to extend our um, existing rules depending upon our need but also it saves time if we could use the existing out of the box rules so some of the uh, most famous um, rules that would be position attributes enabled as eff parameters so there are others as well so uh, i could name a few such as action reason effective date to hcm parameters and so on so there is a catch again here so currently we cannot create object defaulting rules on job business object so there is a catch here so we have to remember this in our implementations i hope oracle would give us this functionality in future releases okay so i guess i have a mode uh, i have gone very fast so the primary reason for this was I wanted to cover as much as features in the stipulated time. So I may be a bit fast, but as uh, we have the limitation of time, so I would like to cover most, more and more features so that it benefits for different businesses as different businesses have different requirements and 21B, if it fits in our requirements it would be very useful and it would be very useful for various domains as well so let me go to the next one and that would be otbi enhancements so we have uh, minor hr optimizations in otbi so we have different naming conventions now and we can see many attributes renamed across different subject areas and this has been done in order to make uh, more uh, easier names for the columns in otbi reports and make it more user friendly rather than being a technical naming conventions so the business benefit here so this would make life of otbi users easy while developing our otbi reports and dashboards so though it may not be a very big feature but surely it adds on to the user experience while creating otbis
and we have hidden metrics in assignment change event real time so we have hidden matrices in hire head count suppose and number of hires for employees and contingent workers and we can also see some of the new attributes and uh, flex fields added in our documents of record real time so like per document type dff this was missing in previous releases and this uh, and we can see this is this was one of the most uh, recommended uh, uh, feature by most of the oracle communities so that uh, they could make use of all their uh, descriptive flex field related and um, info in their uh, document types because we may have to get some uh, flexibility in to add more information in dffs in our document types so there's one more uh, attributes enhancement again in seniority dates as well so we can now have multiple attributes and um, uh, removal of attributes in our seniority dates dimension and as i told you earlier so there are uh, new attributes added in dor area so one of the most common that was a uh, well in demand that would be descriptive flex field for uh, document types dff so i have nothing much to say here as it's self explanatory i'll be moving into the next section so let me so as time is permitting me let me go to the replace or remove features as well i wouldn't go in much detail in this but uh, surely i could uh, if i could give some uh, add on in this if it benefits any business i would be immensely happy to do so uh, so i would just uh, run through the slides as we have shortage of time so i would take this in a very uh, limited in a i would just summarize this so the, during the global transfer we had changed legal employer so this is just an ui update so this just uh, making you uh, giving you a good feel so change legal employer would be replaced by local and global flow in upcoming 21d again there is a catch this would be a multi phase release so without wasting much time so uh my motto was to cover more and more features as i could so i have still some time remaining so let me hand it over to chris thank you very much atta for, for taking us through all of those Thanks. features I, i'm sure that there's things in this release that each of our attendees are going to look to deploy and, and benefit from. So, so thank you very much to, uh, for, for taking the time to do that. So just moving on to, to the third um, and, and, and the final main section, which is talking about leveraging innovative technology. I just want to recap on, on what we discussed in, in the last webinar at 21A about how technologies can help with not only facilitating the release cycle, but also how you can drive further success from your Oracle applications and, and in this instance from, from an HCM perspective. So we talked about how Evasys has leveraged the latest technologies and created a series of packages across three distinct areas, RPA, robotic process automation, analytics and, and chatbot or digital assistance as, as you may know it. So with RPA, we spoke about how we can help our customers automate the regression testing, for example, that's carried out for each quarterly cycle to save time and provide focus on where it's required. We also looked at how we can save time with automating business processes too. And then from an analytics perspective, we spoke about our value-based analytics that can be overlaid on the existing analytics that you may have in place already. And it provides key information around four areas. And, and the four key areas are, from a process optimization perspective, optimization perspective how we can help identify processes that can be optimized or even automated from a system adoption perspective it was where we could help to identify areas and reasons for low adoption rates for example 
and in turn provide recommendations on changes to improve those. From an information output perspective, it was looking around the requirements that you and your teams may have um, for more data or, or information from your, from your system, systems and, and provide you greater visibility of data and, and trends. And then finally, from a, an audit and compliance perspective, looking at regulations, segregations of duties, as well as ensuring compliance with internal SLAs that, that may be in place. And then finally, we, we spoke a little bit about chatbots or digital assistants, as, as we may know them, and how they can be used to improve the overall user experience. So for today, and as a result of the poll that we uh, that we carried out during that 21A advisory session, we're going to cover analytics and specifically around our VBA solution. Um, I've already covered RPA in 21A, so, so any of our new guests that um, that were didn't join us in, in the 21A that want to know a bit more about RPA, please do look up the recording from, from the previous session or, or reach out to us with, with the contact details that, that we're going to provide at the end of the webinar. Um, and then we're going to look at chatbots in, in 21C. But Atta, can, can I just take this opportunity to bring you back in and, and ask you to take us through how value-based analytics helps our customers drive greater efficiencies? Uh, sure, Chris. I would love to do that. Yeah, please. So let me move forward. So. Uh, we can see so whenever an organization buys uh, or is uh, when an organization brings home oracle hcm to his business so first he would think of a dimension that is written on his investment so whenever organizations buy oracle hcm licenses uh, they would be very busy in implementing and then doing the war room exercises of solving all the issues but there is a different perspective so we we need to think about the return on our investments as well so evosys has a proprietary tool that is named as value-based analytics so we have studied various businesses and monitored different businesses closely so that we could give the best value for money in the field of analytics so this would help businesses from moving in a complete different dimension. So maybe from a reactive mode, we would move into a proactive mode. And with technicalities, we would give uh, add-on business value. And from guesswork, with surely we would go now more to fact work. So our VBA is a complete package for ERP, HCM, and SCM. We have uh, around 300 plus pre-built analysis and more than 140 pre-built KPIs focus clearly on business needs. So as Chris told, uh, we have different KPI categories for optimization, system adaptation, information, and audit and compliance. So without taking much time, so I would just give a brief for the VBS available in our key areas. So as we know, our HCM module is integrated so we have dependency on other modules also like payroll, talent, recruiting, benefits, or maybe time and labor, absences. So we have identified key VBAs for all these key modules. So uh, we can have key metrics such as attrition, turnover, retention, data quality for global HR, or it may be payroll cost impact analysis in payroll, performance cycle in our talent management, recruiting cycle time, benefits expense, uh, exceptions in benefits and maybe exceptions in uh, time and labor so i have a small video that i would like to share and um, give you an add-on so we can see a mind map so as the businesses are interconnected we cannot segregate data and we can see uh, time and quality is what we need in our business so we have in our human capital management we have a uh, specified KPI. So we have a uh, popular prompts such as uh, HR and absence, recruiting, learn benefits. So let me search a year for this and let me slice and dice data based on my prompts. 
So maybe let me see, go to my HR and absence dashboard, and maybe I can see my head counts based on female gender ratio or as on their nationalization or maybe average age tenure and multiple facets of all my information in slicing and dicing the data. So for suppose, let me scroll up. Suppose I'm opening my as on date headcount. So we have studied businesses very closely and we assure businesses to give a pure add on on this. So it makes a life of a person in all hierarchy, starting from analysts to high business users, such as managers and directors at the upper level, very easy. And one of the key features is this, I can drill down from my legal employer or my department to the employee level data. So this is a very good functionality. It gives me an opportunity to drill down to employee level. So this is a very good, uh, uh, I can say, I can say this is a very good uh, um, boon to me. So let me show you one more. So suppose my, we have um, KPIs for different um, indices such as attrition rate, turnover and so on. Maybe, and we can have a threshold uh, specified based on a business need. So I'll have an overview where the, we are outperforming and underperforming. And this I believe would be the need of the hour for higher level business users. So we can have different slicing and dicing of data based on department wise and turnover and so on, depending on our business needs. So we can again filter this data depending upon our requirements. So I can assure you, this is a very good uh, value add addition a business can have. And let me show you the, let me show you the employee level as well. Like this, I can slice and dice my data. So there is no, it almost covers all our specific business needs. So as we have a time crunch, so I'll just stop it here and maybe hand it over to Chris. And before that, if we could have any question and answers, I would be really happy. Thanks very much, Atan, and hopefully, Albeit it was it was a very brief sort of overview on, on the analytics piece. Hopefully you found that useful to, to give you a bit of a taster as to uh, what it is that the the um, VBA solution that we've got can, uh, can provide you within your organisation. So if you'd like to explore that further, uh, maybe have a, a wider demonstration to to involve yourselves and and some of your colleagues throughout the um, you know, throughout your organisations. Please do contact us either via your project manager or, or using the details that we provide at the end of this session and we can work out you know we can work with you to identify how you can benefit from analytics as well as VBA. Okay so um, Atta, it looks like we've got one question that has yet to be answered and, and I just need to take you back I'm conscious of time but I just need to take you back to um, when you were taking us through some of the features. The, the question is around um, defaulting business titles. So once you've defaulted a business title, will it show on all pages like self-service employment info as well? That question you um, can answer? Yes, sure. So as of now, Oracle has uh, given us the leverage. It would show in various flows, but uh, there is still uh, gray areas in uh, the complete list of flows. So, uh, some of the flows Oracle has already mentioned in release readiness. So these are surely available for others. We have to wait for upcoming releases as this is also a multi-phase release feature. I hope it helps. Thanks very much for that. Um, I, um, I think we're, we've answered all the other questions as we've gone through the webinar. Um, so, so thank you very much for my colleagues that, that were actually answering those questions as we went through. Um, if there if there are any other final questions, please do ask them. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to go through the closing note and I'll just come back to any questions that, that remain unanswered. So what happens next? 
Um, thank you, everyone, for, for attending. Um, slightly overrunning. But what, what's going to happen next is presentation screen recordings are going to be made available to each of you. And I know that there's been a couple of questions around um, getting access to the presentation. And I, I'm sorry for, for, those, um, for those of you that weren't able to actually get access to the 21A release. Um, please do contact us using the business at evasysglobal.com if you don't receive that, that um, PowerPoint presentation, because it is made available to everyone who actually attends the, um, uh, the webinar. But also the screen re re session recording itself will also be made available, so you can actually listen to, um, um, to what Ath has taken us through today again. We'll provide you with a feedback form. Um, these sessions are for you. OK, so it, what we want to know is, is how we can make them better for you. Are there things that you like? Are there things that you want us to improve on? Please do fill those in. It's really, really important that, that we have those so that we can actually improve these for you. If you want to talk to us about anything that's, um, that we've discussed today, if you want to have a look at an impact analysis um, on some of these features specifically for your environment, or if you want to know about more about um, the, the BBA piece that, that Ad has taken us through, or RPA and, and digital assistance that, that we've sort of discussed at a high level, please again do contact us either via your project manager or even us directly at business at ebusysglobal.com so that we can actually get the right people um, to, to discuss those with you. Um, the next sessions you, you'll see on, on screen now, we've done, this is the second session of this series. So yesterday we covered um, finance piece and Ata's has just um, taken us through global human resources. Um, we've got talent management benefits and compensation um, this week so um, talent management's tomorrow and then benefits and compensations on on the 23rd um, always at the same time which is 3 p.m um, uk time 4 p.m european time um, then next week we've got supply chain management hr help desk and orc and then we're going to close off the sessions with workforce management and global payroll so if there are no other questions, thank you all very, very much indeed for, for joining us today. Hope you found it useful. Uh, I'm sure we'll see some of you for, for some of the more um, HR related um, sessions later on this week and next week. Um, but if not, we hope you join us again for the 21C that will be available later on this year. So please do keep an eye out for the dates as, as when they come out. Thank you very much, everyone. And I hope you have a, rest, a good rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.